Welcome back, this is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we're gonna to be doing a monochromatic look with crackle paints, giving those traditional crackle paints just a little bit more of a unique look. We're using all paints today, no glitter, but obviously this can be done in glitter as well if you'd like to, but I'm just saying, we're, we're just doing paints today. This project's so easy, I know you guys got this. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now let's wake up, prep those tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. I am starting out with a 20 ounce modern curve that I purchased through the Stainless Depot company, but please feel free to use any tumbler you already have on hand. I already prepped this tumbler and it is ready for our paint. Now you can spray paint this tumbler if you'd like or use acrylic paints, whatever you have on hand is perfectly fine, but I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I use today. I'm gonna be using a very bright lighter red and a burgundy color. Now these paints here are chalk paints that I purchased through Christy Taylor Creations. I'll make sure to put her link into the description below. There we go. <laughs> so that way you guys can purchase these Pantheon paints as well if you'd like to. I'm also gonna be using a bright white and an off white for the top portion of my tumbler. Now these paints here are an acrylic chalk paint and they cover these tumblers so well. I absolutely love these paints. They're my favorite to use for these kinds of projects. Now what I was showing you guys there is I need to split my tumbler in half and I'm just using some Play-Doh because I like the height of it. <laughs> I'm gonna place that onto my table and then I'm just gonna take a marker, any type of marker you have on hand, and I'm going to place my tumbler down flat onto the table and just rotate it around and that will give me a very nice straight line so that way I know where to stop and start with my paints. Now I am gonna go ahead and start with my red paint first, which I will show you guys here in a second. You wanna go ahead and you wanna shake these up really well. Now the whole point of monochromatic, meaning it's like the same colors, just different shades. So that's the look that we're going after. So I'm gonna put my bright colors on the bottom and we're gonna put our darker colors on top. Now if you don't feel comfortable, please tape it off, do it that way. But I, I was just kind of freehanding it here. But if you feel comfortable, you can do it this way as well. So here it is. I'm going to go rinse my brush off because I just have the same brush that I use. You want to make sure you use a nice fluffy brush whenever you go to apply these paints. And you're going to do the same thing with the white. You're just going to apply the white to the top. And it actually really looked like a Pokeball to me. Do you, you guys know what I'm talking about? Pokemon? It kind of looks like that <laughs> when you're done. So... <laughs> So after I get done painting my rustic Pokeball here, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and you can use a blow dryer to blow dry it, it dries really fast. I just use my blow dryer or a heat gun, whatever you have on hand. But like I said, it, it pretty much dries instantaneously after you hit it with that heat gun. So now it's all dry and we're ready to apply our crackle medium to our tumbler. Now the crackle medium I like to use is by Art Minds and I purchased through this through Michael's. Now I found this in where all their chalk paints are located at your local Michael's store. That's exactly where you will find it. And I think they even sell it in the gallon jug too if you do tons of crackles. <laughs> but I don't think they sell it online. If they do, I'll attach it below. But if not, you can definitely find that in their store. Now the main thing you wanna do here is you just wanna really load this up. The more of this medium you apply, the better crackle you will have and that's all you want to do and you want to let that dry absolutely thoroughly before you add your paints to it you want to make sure that it's not sticky at all completely dry this probably took about an hour or you can hit it up with your heat gun to make it speed up faster if you'd like to <laughs> so now we're going to apply the darker colors on top of the lighter colors i'm going to start with my white first and another main thing you want to remember is one swipe Get a good amount on your brush, one swipe down, and just go completely around doing it that way. Don't worry if you miss any spots or it looks a little blotchy. It's supposed to look rustic. It's gonna end up crackling in the end. So don't go back, don't touch anything up. One swipe and that is it. 
Now, like I said earlier, these chalk paints dry very fast. So as soon as I'm done swiping my last little bit of paint here, I'm gonna turn around. As you can see, that crackle has already started to begin. Now I rinsed my brush and we are ready to move on to that burgundy color on the bottom. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna get as close as we can to the middle because we're gonna be putting a band around the middle anyways. So it's okay if it's not absolutely perfect in the middle. All right, guys, don't, don't worry about it. And we're gonna do the same thing, just one swipe completely around the bottom, right over that lighter red. Now, once I have this paint all the way applied onto my tumbler, I went out and I made sure to hit it up really good with my, my blow dryer, my fancy blow dryer, and that really helps the process and it really helps out with those crackles as well. Now here it is all nice and dry. It doesn't look so much like a Pokeball anymore, I don't think. <laughs> At least I hope not. <laughs> so now we are going to go on to the next step here. Now this is completely optional. You don't have to do this, but I just wanted it a little bit more dirty looking at the top or rustic looking, you know, antique looking. There we go, antique looking. So I'm going to take a little bit of slate alcohol ink. I have a fan brush. You don't have to use all this fancy stuff if you don't have it on hand. You don't need to go out and purchase anything. That little tray there I got from the dollar store. All right, guys. So if you want to do this, you can do this. But I'm just going to show you what I did to kind of give it a little bit more of that rustic look. Just going to kind of fan that around my tumbler. No rhyme or reason, just kind of distress it just a little bit more because I just wanted, like I said, a little bit more of an antique look. So that's all I did here. You just want to be very careful not to add too big of blotches like I just did there, but that's okay because we're going to come through and I have some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, 91% rubbing alcohol, and I just kind of spritzed it on there and rubbed it around until I got the effect that I was looking for. There is no right or wrong when it comes to making art. Wherever your imagination takes you, when it comes to making this, let it take you there. You can use any type of color combination you would like. This, these are obviously just suggestions or inspiration for you guys. Whatever you come up with, I know is gonna be absolutely beautiful. All right, now we're going to move on. We're going to go ahead and apply a thin coat of epoxy on top before we apply our decals, just in case we don't like our decals and we can peel them off easily without peeling our paints up. So I'm going to go ahead and apply my epoxy here. I'm going to let that cure overnight and then we'll be ready to add our decals. I'm using vinyl for my decals, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I did that. So I measured completely around my tumbler, and then I measured the height of the area that I would like to cover with this particular design, which I chose chickens. I, I wanted it, you know, I thought it went well with the theme that I was going for here. So you can use obviously anything you'd like. You use little cows, little pigs, dots, whatever you guys want. So I wanted the top chicken and the bottom chicken to be facing the same way. So I'm gonna go ahead and line them up where I want them. It was about a little over three inches height of the area that I need, needed to cover. There we go, I know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and line these chickens up. Then I'm gonna take one and I'm going to reverse it. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this image and then I'm going to invert this or flip it. And then after I have it flipped, I'm gonna go ahead and place that in the middle. And now we have our first row kind of how we want it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure everything is nicely spaced the way I would like. Once I have them spaced the way that I would like, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight everything and I'm gonna make sure that they're all arranged perfectly in the center. So I'm just gonna highlight that. I'm gonna line center, then I'm going to attach them and then I'm going to start duplicating them. Now the second row here, I'm just going to kind of offset it just a little bit, just a little bit higher than that next one. There we go. Now that I have it all lined up here, now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna highlight that again and I'm going to attach it and then I'm just going to duplicate these images here. And I'm just going to continue to go completely across until I get the width that I would like. Now, I was a little bit off with my width, but that's okay, I came back through. I'll show you guys what I did here in a second, but I went ahead and I just kind of duplicated these all the way down and then I'm going to highlight everything and we're gonna align everything once more. Now, after I have them highlighted, I came up to align and I just did align vertically. Then I'm going to highlight and attach all of these images and they will be ready to cut on our machine. 
I just used a basic black vinyl for this. I thought it went well with kind of the look that I was after. So I'm just going to wrap that around. And that's when I realized I didn't do enough on my chickens, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. Like I said, we'll come back through and we'll fix it. Not a big deal. Now I'm going to take my transfer tape and I'm going to burnish that down really well onto our images here. Then I'm going to just kind of trim everything up. You want to trim it as close as you can to your little chickens here all the way around just so that way there's not any little extras hanging over. It just really helps out in the process when we go to apply it to our tumbler here. Now because I am using a curvy type tumbler, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come through. I'm not going to be able to do in between every single one of these chickens, but as you can see, I'm just making these slits and it will really help out to make sure that everything is nice and straight once we go to apply it. Now that it's just as easy as that guys, it's going to be super simple. I know you guys got this. Once we have all the slits, I'm going to go ahead and I just take mine completely off my, my backing here. But if you don't feel comfortable, you leave your backing on and just do it that way. But I'm, I'm okay with doing it this way. And as you can see, I lost two little chickens. Again, not a big deal. We'll fix it in the end. Now, all I did was line up my top chickens at the very top of my, my tumbler here. And then we're just going to wrap the top completely around. I'm not worried about my little my little slits that I made down there. We'll worry about those in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and wrap my, my tumbler completely with our images here, making sure that the top is nice and aligned. Then we're going to come through and I'm going to take these little tabs. I'm going to show you here in a second here. Let me turn it around. Let's start at the front here and I'm just going to take them and I'm going to make sure that they're nice and straight and I'm going to hold it down nice and tight and then push everything nice and flat against the tumbler. And I'm just going to do this completely around, just making sure that I hold on to those little tabs that I cut for myself and making sure that everything is nice and aligned. So very simple, right? Now, once I had those done, it was as easy as just adding my two little chickens I lost. I recut three more little chickens here, put them in the little area that was missing, and there you go. Nobody will ever know, okay? I know you guys got this. Now let's add our finishing embellishments. First, we're gonna add our little belt here around the middle. I, get, I It's a belt, sure, it's a belt. We're gonna do that completely around the center. I just feel like it really needed that and it really hides any little imperfections we might have painted on there. So no reason to, to fret about your, your paint lines there. Unless you don't want the belt, then, then maybe you should fret about your paint lines. But other than that, nobody's going to see it under there. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and trim off the little extras there. Then I'm going to add my decals here. Now my decals that I chose. I chose a red and burgundy to kind of match the theme of my tumbler here, but I ended up not liking the black over the burgundy, which is okay. We're going to go forward. And once I got it applied is when I re just realized it just, I didn't like the way it looked. I just thought it was too dark and it just kind of clashed with everything, but I went ahead and applied it anyways. And then I came through and I actually went ahead and peeled off the black portion that was over top of the burgundy and then i came back through and i ended up adding a metallic or a brush looking gold over top of it i i just felt like it looked much better but that's okay you know that that's the whole thing of making tumblers you know or doing any type of craft you know you're gonna see it and you're gonna be like oh i don't know see i didn't like it it was too dark but that's okay you know we make mistakes and it's all good. I'm just going to show you guys since I already had applied the bottom portion here, I'm going to go ahead and split up the wording here just to make it a little bit easier to do this offset. But you guys know I like to try to keep it as real as possible. I know you guys probably go through these issues too, so it's good to to see if, if I go through it too, so that way you guys know I, I do the same exact thing. So <laughs> not a big deal, right? And it looks so much better. I like it so much better with that gold over top for sure. Now we're gonna move on to its last finishing coats here. I'm gonna do two last finishing coats. And you guys know I love to use Illumilite's Amazing Plus. It has that UV inhibitor in it, so that way it keeps it from yelling, yellowing over the years whenever you're out and about using it in the sunlight. I am gonna let that cure the proper allotted time and then she is ready to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, 
or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own. I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time.